Today, we're going to build a highlight component that can turn this into this. And this question came from one of our Build UI members who asked how to highlight any panel in their dashboard. And I ended up with this awesome highlight component that can wrap any React component, even a server component. Now we're going to be starting here in this dashboard component. And right now it is rendering the visitors from this stats prop. And we want to apply some styles whenever this visitors prop changes. So we need some new React state, which will store the previous visitors. So let's see the initial value with visitors. And this way, when the component re-renders with new visitors, uh, we'll know if it has changed, if the previous visitors don't equal the new visitors. So let's call this is highlighting. Now we can come down here to our panel, which is background gray 900. And let's just turn this class name into an expression. And we'll say if is highlighting is true, we'll make it background sky 500. Otherwise, we'll make this background gray 900. And now if we save this and refresh, when we first load the page, uh, we'll see the background is 900. And as soon as we change this, we'll see uh, the panel is highlighted. And we can also make the text white. Otherwise, we'll make the text sky 500. So now we have kind of our highlight treatment here. But this stays highlighted, but we want to turn the highlight off after a certain amount of milliseconds. So we need to call set previous visitors here after, say, a second. So uh, let's create a new effect and we'll call set timeout after a second. And we'll use this to set the previous visitors to the new value of visitors that's coming from the prop. And we'll go ahead and drop this in the dependency array. We'll grab an ID and we'll return a cleanup function that clears the timeout. And check this out. Now we get a second of highlighting and then it resets. And uh, it even works if we click it multiple times because every time this component re-renders, uh, we clear the previous timeout, we rerun this effect. So this is a nice restartable behavior that we get for free. Now uh, this is a great start, but there's kind of a lot going on here. So let's go ahead and extract this uh, into a little custom hook that we're going to call use highlight. And we can just grab this all the way down to here and move it right up into our hook. And let's go ahead and parameterize uh, this value. So this will be value, which is unknown. We can replace it here, 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 and here. And we'll rename our state to previous value and set previous value. And our hook will just return is highlighting. So now we can come down here where we want to use our hook and just say let is highlighting equals use highlight for the visitors. And now if we give this a refresh, we have a nice clean initial render and we still have our highlight behavior. We can even uh, add some transitions here to make it animated. So Pretty cool, you can start to see how flexible this is. And uh, maybe instead of hard coding this a thousand, uh, we also want our caller to be able to pass this in. So maybe we only want half a second highlight. Let's go ahead and add a duration prop, which is a number. And we can use this in our timeout. And we'll also add this to the dependency array. So now we can get uh, an easy half a second highlight or a 1500 millisecond highlight. And we can reuse this hook uh, wherever we need to in our app. So pretty neat. So this is pretty cool. We have our little use highlight hook, which is really easy to reuse. But you might notice that we've been working inside of a client component and only client components can use hooks. So we can't use this if we were working in a server component. Now I've been working with server components a lot and I think it would be awesome to be able to highlight panels in a server component. And uh, in order to do that, we actually need a new component boundary. So uh, let's come here and create a new highlight component. We'll export default function highlight. And uh, this is going to be a client component. And now I'll come back here to my dashboard and let's just grab this hook and drop it right here in our new component. And we'll go ahead and grab state and effect. And we'll give our new component some props, value and duration just like our hook value is unknown and duration is a number. 
And now this highlight component can use highlight and just pass through value and duration. It gets back is highlighting. And uh, now it can return it, but we have to ask, uh, what do we want this component to render? And so let's come back to our dashboard and take a look at this. Uh, we're no longer going to be using this hook right here and we don't need use effect and use state anymore. So how might we use our new highlight component here directly in our template? Well, what if instead of using state to customize uh, the class names here, we could just turn this div into a highlight component and we could pass it, say, a value of visitors and a duration of 1500. And we also need some way uh, for our calling side here to be able to pass in custom styles when the highlight component is highlighting. So we could have something like a highlight class name that takes in uh, these two classes right here, uh, or we could add our own class name to this component, something like, you know, highlight is on, something like this that lets the caller customize this when it's in a highlighted state. Uh, but you can see here I'm using Tailwind, and these days I like to follow this pattern of using data attributes. Um, this is what the Radix library uses. A lot of libraries are using this these days, and it actually is much more flexible than either of those two approaches. So what if instead this component gets something like a data highlight attribute, and now the caller can use this to style it, whether they're using vanilla CSS or Tailwind, anything like that. So this is the approach we're gonna take. Let's come back to our highlight component, and right here, we are going to return a div that renders children. So let's go ahead and add children here as a prop. And now on this div, we can set data highlight to be true if is highlighting is true. And otherwise we need to set it to null so that it removes this attribute. So uh, let's go ahead and save that, come back to our page, and let's just comment out this class name for now and import our new component. Okay, we can see we don't have our panel styles, but let's go ahead and find this panel node in our tree. And uh, let's click the refresh button right here. And there we go. We see data highlight is true, shows up for 1500 milliseconds, and then it disappears. So uh, let's actually now forward these class names through in our highlight component. We'll also accept class name as a prop. And we'll add this to our div. And now if we bring back our class name attribute, let's just put in true here for now, uh, we see the classes are getting forwarded. And uh, here comes the cool part. We can actually target this data state with Tailwind. So let's go ahead and drop our base classes here back on the root class list. And then we'll get rid of this conditional, turn this back into just a plain old class string. And now we can target our new highlighted state using data attribute variants from Tailwind. And it looks like this, data dash, and then inside of these arbitrary properties, we can put in highlight. And this prefix will only match uh, if there is a data highlight attribute present. And so now we can make the background sky 500 and we can make the text white uh, if that attribute is present. So let's go ahead and save that. I'll wrap this text so we can see everything. And if we press refresh, look at that. Pretty cool, we've got our highlight treatment back. And again, if we keep pressing it, we get this kind of restart behavior for free because the timer's being reset. But uh, now check this out, let's delete this. And I'm going to delete use client right here. Save this and refresh. We are now working in a server component, but we still have this interactivity. So I think this is such a cool example of uh, how client components can wrap server components, adding interactive pieces to them like this. And um, everything we're doing here is in CSS, so we're not gonna have any issues on initial render, um, but we still get all of the features of React, like the state and uh, this effect that we're using from this hook through this component. Pretty neat example of finding a hook that could be useful in a server component using a new component boundary to wrap it uh, and exposing some interface, in this case, this data highlight attribute as a way for the server component to actually use that feature. Now I've gone ahead and put together this page over on build UI with some more examples. Uh, these first two use CSS transitions 
And this third one actually uses an animation, uh, all being triggered from the data attributes. So you can grab the code over here, uh, including the code for this animated counter portion, which is really nice for pulling off this effect. So check out the description for a link where you can grab all this code for yourself. But that about does it. I think it's pretty cool that we ended up with a highlight component that you can drop into any part of your dashboard to style different sections when a value changes. If you have any questions about this, just let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.